Welcome to Hoko Polito's Poetry Moment, featuring When Your Word is a Match by Joseph Ross. I'm Shania Hudson. In August 1955, just before he died in a barn in Mississippi, 14-year-old Emmett Till called for his mother. His last cries were heard not by his mother, but by a black farm worker named Willie Lewis. Poet Joseph Ross learned the story of Lewis when he was doing research for his prize-winning poem, if Mamie Till was the mother of God, about Emmett Till's mother reacting to her son's murder. When young Emmett was killed, Lewis was 18, working as a sharecropper in the Jim Crow South and became a witness in the trial of two white men accused of kidnapping and killing the young man. I was just so moved by the decision an ordinary person made. He wasn't an activist or a hero in some way, he wasn't a policymaker, Ross tells the Writing Life host, poet E. Ethelbert Miller. That hot morning in 1955, Lewis was walking down a blazing Mississippi road when a green Chevy pickup truck drove past him, with Emmett lying in the bed of the truck. White men, related to the woman who said Emmett flirted with and whistled at her, were in the cab of the truck. Lewis then saw the same truck parked outside a barn and heard someone inside being hit and calling for his mother to save him. When a white man with a pistol walked out of the barn for a drink from the well, he asked Lewis if he had seen anything. Lewis said, no, sir. But a few months later in a Mississippi courthouse, Lewis testified against the men who had kidnapped Till Despite Lewis's testimony at two trials, the white men were acquitted for murder and later kidnapping. In 1956, in an interview with Look Magazine, the men admitted they had shot Emmett, tied a cotton gin fan around his neck with barbed wire to weight him, and threw his body into the Tallahatchie River. After having to hide from mobs until the trial, Lewis spoke so softly in the courtroom that he was barely able to be heard. But when asked, he stood and pointed to the men he saw in the truck and outside the barn. The audience in the courtroom gasped when he did. Immediately afterwards, Lewis had to move from Mississippi. Ross explained, I felt so strongly about what he had to go through, but doing the research controls that a little bit and lets the poem say it in a way that's not just shrieking or screaming. The research provides a lane for the passion to go through. So it's not an explosion of passion, which is sort of uncontrolled and not moderated. Lewis lived out most of the rest of his life in secrecy. In an interview in 2003, he told 60 Minutes, I couldn't have walked away because Emmett was 14 probably never been to Mississippi in his life. And he'd come to visit his grandfather and they killed him. That's not right. When they had the pictures, when I saw his body and what it was like, I knew that I couldn't say no. And now, When Your Word is a Match by Joseph Ross. So this is uh, When Your Word is a Match for Willie Lewis, 1937-2013. When you walk past Klansmen smiling at you on your way into the courthouse, wondering how you will ever live here after this airless day. When you tell the story of a pickup truck, a barn, a boy, a threat. When you point at two men in the courtroom and everyone gasps at what they have never seen before but know is true. When your word is a match head hissing into flame testifying aloud but blown out as soon as you speak, when all the air in the courtroom shakes its white head, when the smiling men brag about killing the boy in the barn, when they joke about a river, about what cannot float, when you flee to the mother's city to breathe air that isn't a gasp, when you hide the name your parents gave you for fear the men from that barn will come smiling for you too. When you speak to your wife years later after a lifetime of breathing beside her, when this air thick as lead presses your chest to breaking, when the match's flame consumes all the air, revealing a coffin, a boy, a mother, and you burning still. <laughs> 